Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Thank you for joining me tonight, and welcome to Constellation Tour number 51. Tonight, we're going to go over the um, obscure constellation Phoenix. It's the fabulous bird that was reborn from the ashes of its previous life. And Phoenix is located in the southern celestial hemisphere. Um, just north of the star Akernar at the end of Eridanus the river. And it's located between the two bright stars Akernar and Fomalhaut. Phoenix is best viewed between October and December. And being a, a southern celestial hemisphere object, we've changed our location to French Guiana. So we get to view the sky from a more southerly location. And I've got light pollution set for a suburban sky for the 1st of November of 2020, since Phoenix is best viewed between October and December. Okay, so how do we go about finding Phoenix? Well, from the southern skies of French Guiana, we are looking south. And if we turn, if, if in, uh, in November, if we turn and look east instead, we should see an old familiar friend rising, and that would be Orion. You see Orion's belt here. And from a more, from a more equatorial location, such as French Guiana, Orion appears to rise completely on his side, which is kind of would really be cool to see. So here you have Orion's belt and this bright star over here is Rigel. And if you remember how to find Eridanus the river, Eridanus sort of begins at Rigel and winds its way around down to Akernar here. And Phoenix is located north of Akernar at the river's end between the bright stars Akernar and Fomalhaut. So let's turn our view a little bit more toward the south and see if we can find the bright star Fomalhaut. I'm going to say it's this one right here. There we go, Alpha Pisces Austrinus or Fomalhaut. So here's, here's Akernar and here's Fomalhaut. So Phoenix is between these two. So it's in this region of sky right here. So let's, let's turn on our constellation lines. And here we can see, let's, let's move a little bit more south. And here we can see Eridanus the river flowing and it ends right here at the star Akernar. And up here in Pisces Austrinus, we have this, the bright star Fomalhaut. So just between these two stars at the river's end here, just above the river's end, you have, you have Phoenix. So that's not an easy one to find. There are, there are no real notable objects in Phoenix. So let, let's go over how to find it again. Look for Orion rising, find Rigel. That shows you the beginning of Eridanus the river, which flows up this way, and then all the way down to where it ends here at Akernar. And Phoenix is just above Akernar, between Akernar and Fomalhaut. So right again, right in this area here. So since there are no real, real notable deep sky objects in Phoenix, let's, let's observe from a darker location. Let's make it dark. And let's enjoy the southern sky from a dark location looking due south. And looking due south, you see this bright star here. This is Akernar. And this bright star up here is Fomalhaut. And if you look between the two, at this little grouping of stars right here, you find Phoenix. OK, 
Okay, let's have a look at the constellation boundaries. And you can see here, this all this area inside this red line here is the area of sky for Phoenix. And it is right next to Eridanus the river. That's this long constellation outlined with the stair-step red line here ending at Akronar. So this whole area of the sky is Phoenix. And there's not, there's not a whole lot to see there. There is one notable double star that we can go for. And it's also a variable star. It's Zeta Phoenicius. And I believe it's not only is it in the southern constellation Phoenix, it's also in, in southern Phoenix. I think it's one of these two down here. There we go. There's Zeta Phoenicius. This is a fourth magnitude double star and variable star. So let's take a look at it through the finder. And being fourth magnitude, it's actually one of the brightest stars in the constellation Phoenix. And it's located 279 light years from Earth. And if we put more power on it, you'll see that it does split pretty easily. In fact, it may even split again. It does. So Zeta Phoenicius or Warren would really be a, a nice target for telescopes. I mean, you've got you've got this wide, widely spaced double here, and then this main component here splits again, sort of like Alcor. I'm sorry, um, Mizar and Alcor in Ursa Major, where this would be Mizar A and B, and this would be Alcor. So it's sort of sort of the same situation that you have with that. That would be a really good one. Okay, let's return to a naked eye view and get ourselves reoriented here. Again, we're looking south. And if we turn our view just to the east, we can see Orion rising. And the night uh, that the simulation is running, Mars is really, I'm sorry, that's not Mars, that's the moon. Um, seems like Mars is supposed to be up in the sky too. I'll have to look that up. Now we're also competing with a full moon. I thought that was a little too bright to be Mars. And there's the Pleiades there. And interesting from the southern sky where you find these objects. At the Pleiades rising in the east, along with the moon. Let's see if Mars is up. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, Mars is also pretty bright on November 1st, 2020, with a magnitude of minus 2.1. And I believe in 2020, Mars reached opposition on October the 6th. So November 1st, it would be just past opposition. Let's have a look at Mars through the finder. And then again through an eyepiece. There we go. It looks like we've got the two Mars, uh, the two moons of Mars here. At Phobos, Phobos and Deimos. So by the time you see this this presentation, Mars will probably already be um, have shrunk again, far from opposition. But um, be sure to look at it during one of its uh, close approaches, one of its oppositions. Okay, I've returned to a naked eye view again, a 60 degree true field of view. We've got Orion rising in the east. So let's turn our attention back to Phoenix. Let's see if we can find it. Here's Rigel, and here's Eridanus the river. You can see this sort of winding line of stars that ends here at Akronor. You can see the way Eridanus winds around. I use that a lot because it's, it's next to a lot of constellations, so it, it serves as a signpost. 
since it begins and ends at such bright stars. It makes for a, a good signpost. So it winds around like this and ends here at Akronar. Turn our attention back to the south and Fomalhaut comes back into view. So you've got Akronar and Fomalhaut and you have Phoenix right in this region here. Right here. This part of the sky. So there are no Messier objects in Phoenix. In fact, there are no real notable objects in this constellation. So let's use Stellarium as a star chart and go to deep sky objects and turn on our labels and markers. And you can see even with a uh, pretty high density of objects here turned on, there aren't many that fall within the boundaries of Phoenix. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see you've got You've got a, all these red ovals, they're all galaxies. There are no open clusters noted here. There are no globular clusters. There are no planetary nebulas. They're all galaxies. So in a situation like this, you would, you would want to consult a star chart and observe objects that you may be interested in seeing. Some of these aren't even cataloged in Stellarium. They're just plotted. You click on them, you don't get any information. Here you do with this one. NGC 7744 is an 11th magnitude galaxy. And NGC 7764 is a magnitude 12.3 galaxy. These are nothing to sneeze at. These are pretty faint. Uh, this one's located 67 million light years from Earth. And with these little red ovals, the objects aren't pictured. So you can, can look through the finder and you can zoom in, but most of the time you won't see an image. You'll just see the symbol for it. I've got a few IC objects, which tend to even be fainter than NGCs. Here's something called Robert's Quartet. I've made a lot of uh, personal discoveries just by consulting a star chart and bringing my telescope out and observing things I've never seen before. It doesn't look like Robert's Quartet is. Well, there it is. It is cataloged here. It's NGC 89. Let's get a little closer to it and see what we're dealing with. Oh, they've got a picture of it in here. Surprise. Very nice. So Robert's Quartet here through a nine millimeter delight eyepiece. This is a 14.2 magnitude galaxy cluster located. Oh, there's no distance here shown. Maybe one of the other ones has a distance listed. No, it doesn't. So the other one was 67 million light years. So we know it's at least that far away. I'll return us to a naked eye view. And this concludes my tour of Phoenix. Good night and good seeing.